to heating geeks uh, in this episode i've got this alpha eco 2 plus uh, and this boiler showing multiple fault codes uh, all to do with gas and uh, ignition problems and flame failure and things like that so a previous engineer has been out and he has changed everything to do with the uh, combustion and ignition system except for the pcb uh, so on these boilers i'll explain in a little bit uh, there's some, it's odd the way it works, it's the same as the Baxi GA range uh, and some other boilers. So this has been suffering with the 70 faults right at the bottom there and uh, 38 and I think 42 or something like that. All to do with flame failure and ignition. So here's the front cover off and then here's the, uh, here's the top cover off. And we're going to do a little overview of what's in there. Uh, just the normal stuff making sure you understand what's in the boiler before you start working on it uh, this has got something quite interesting on this boiler uh, which I'll get back to in a minute but look, as you look at it here we just have an electrode a flue sensor we have a sensor on the front of the heat exchanger there and we have one at the top right hand corner there we have an air vent on the top of the heat exchanger with a rubber tube standard fan uh, we have a water pressure switch and a flow switch. We have that red gas valve, diverter valve, and ERP pump. So everything there is quite same old, same old. This is unusual. Combined PRV and condense, so you only have to run one pipe away from the boiler. That's really smart. Um, now, this is quite nice here as well. If you look at this, the way they've got the fan laid out, they actually show you what the PWM signal is, what's the hall sensor, everything else. That's really smart. I will freeze frame on that. Okay, so I just want to go over something here. If you have this gas valve on a boiler, which is a Battalion Partners gas valve. It says it on the side here. See their little logo there. Okay. If you have that gas valve on a boiler, you will inevitably have a, a Battalion Partners main PCB. Um, now what's unusual about this gas valve is everything is set up electronically on the PCB. So the high and low combustion ratios, let me just uh, go to a wide shot here. So the, the high and low combustion ratios are set using the spark electrode, using so the ionization current that that generates. It can the, Using that, the boiler can tell how good or bad the flame is within a certain sort of range. So once you get the, uh, once it lights, so what I meant to say there was, once this boiler lights, it uses the ionization current and it varies the current to that gas valve, the voltage, the, the current, sorry, to that gas valve uh, to adjust how open that gas valve is. It's That gas valve is acting similarly to a stepper motor like they have on the Valent, uh, the Valent Ecotech Plus gas valve. It's got that big Honeywell stepper motor. Uh, well, this gas valve is acting like a stepper motor without actually being a stepper motor. So the current from the PCB is changing all the time to adjust the quality of the burn. We'll have a Battalion Partners main PCB because it's sold to the manufacturers as a as like a uh, full solution. So I've never actually looked at the Baxi version of it, but uh, one more. Bear with me. PCB usually, there we go. See on there? Battalion Partners. PCB, gas valve, fan and venturi, and I'm guessing they have some input on this uh, electrode. It's all done by Battalion Partners. And like I say, it's sold as a, a solution to the manufacturers. So this board, this gas valve, 
the Venturi, the Fern, and the Electrode. And quite possibly there'll be information from God in the burner will have to be supplied. But if you have this type of setup, you have to set the combustion process up in the software on the PCB. So it can be involved because there's no set um, procedures. There's no it, there's no standardized setup procedure for all these manufacturers. So they all design their own uh, user interface and, and then we get sort of stuck with having to set them up. So I'm going to set this one up. I've never done this before. This is an alpha. Um, and uh, and I'll, I'll let you know how easy or difficult it may be. Okay, another thing you should be aware about. Uh, I don't know about this one, but I will check it. On the outlet of this gas valve, there is often a restrictor. Um, and if there is, you mustn't lose it. Okay, so as with anything, you check the basics first. So I've done all my visuals. I've checked the flue. I've checked the flue outside. That was inlet gas pressure there. Uh, to make sure that's correct, that was at max rate. And it was uh, 20 millibar nice and stable. So you've got to remember this boiler has, all the faults this boiler has are to do with ignition and combustion. Okay, so... In theory, people could be going down completely the wrong path because they haven't checked basics, as you will see in one of my other alpha videos. People forget the basics. However, the basic visuals and, and gas inlet pressure and stuff like that is all correct on this boiler, but it has these ignition issues. So just here, what you're seeing here is this boiler has gone through an ignition cycle and not lit. Okay? Like. Uh, it basically it ran, it sparked, it didn't light. Now this is the problem you'll experience with these. I need to tell you something else here. These boilers, you have to check them on high, Sparky. low, and ignition rate, okay? this That's for these, the Baxi GAs, any of the GA range, so that's the Nita Tech, the Duo Tech, uh, and the Mega Flow. All the GAs need to be checked on high, low, and ignition. Mm, what was that? That was weird. If you check them properly, in my experience, something will be out and people go oh you just stick it in a fast calibration and it does it itself that's nonsense i've had one boiler that i've done this to that has set itself up correctly from fast calibration only one and i've probably done this on in the last couple of years maybe 15 boilers and only one has set itself up correctly so all these people that go you just stick it on fast calibration press two buttons and it does it itself I guarantee they're not checking it afterwards, or if they are, they're not set, they're not and making sure it's within the parameters. They're just going, yeah, it's close enough, and walking away. To do these, to be I a proper engineer, you've got to do these things properly, and it takes time and effort, especially on these boilers, because you get to set up everything: high, low, ignition. The boiler will do it itself in a fast calibration, and it will still be wrong. Terrible. Then you'll have to do it in a slow cal calibration or a manual calibration. You'll have to set it up using the buttons on the yeah. front. Sometimes the boiler can get too hot. It can turn into a real difficult situation here. But don't be one of these guys that just walks in, sticks it in fast calibration, and walks out, making it out like it's all done, because it won't be. Ah, dog. That was a near miss, man. Near miss. I survived, though. Combustion sounded bad then. Ran over. Let's go run a hot tap. So it will take a long time to react because I've got this additional tube on here. So, by the way, this is a new electrode, new lead, new gas valve, okay? The inlet pressure is correct. You've just seen me check that. Diverter valve's moved over. We should see this start to drop. It's trying to light. Oh, it lit with a bit of a warm. Well, that's now running on basically low, yeah? 10.3, mm, seems off to me, doesn't it? Don't seem right. Okay, so like a uh, negative fan pressure on a Worcester, this Alpha has a check that checks how clean the uh, main heat exchanger is. So when I jumped onto the book to have a look at how to do the combustion, it said I should do that first. So that's what I'm about to do. This should go to 55. So this is fan speed we're looking at here. Okay. So with that, here's the uh, 
differential pressure across the heat exchanger. So that is reading 1.1. Let's check the book. Pressure millibar naught to 1.68. The flue length is naught to 4.5 meters. Okay. And this is what we've just done. So we've got 1.1. They should have been written in this box when the boiler was fitted, but it wasn't. I'll write it in there now on today's date. So it's not that. So now we're going to get the analyzer on there and set up the combustion ratios. Look at this mess. Okay, so basically, um, all that's wrong with this boiler is the combustion. Okay, so let me tell you the process on this alpha. First thing you do is you lock it in the mode so you can check it. You check it on high, low, and ignition. Okay, and the ignition is 55 on the fan speed. Let's see if we can find Okay, so I checked it, it was wrong. The next thing you do, which is what all the manufacturers that use this setup tell you to do, is a fast calibration. Uh, and this is what any engineer who tells you just do a fast calibration obviously doesn't check them properly because they would know that, honestly, nine times out of ten, that doesn't work. So, and I've done it on this and it didn't work. What a surprise. Okay. So, I then done a manual calibration, which gives you full control of setting it up. Um, and then it works. Now, the process of doing all of that, your heating system is going to get very hot, okay? Especially in weather like this, how it is now. Now, this this video was actually shot last year, I think, before Christmas. Um, but, okay, what I'm trying to get across is you, you, set, you check your basics, then you check the combustion, which will be wrong, okay? Nine times out of ten on a boiler with this setup because people don't have the time to do this. So the combustion will be wrong. So if you, you do a fast calibration, it doesn't give you either enough play to set it up or it doesn't allow you to set it up and the boiler doesn't get it right. Then you do a manual calibration that gives you the full control. Um, so what I'm trying to get across is uh, on all of these, I just now do manual calibration. I go in and set them. I don't test them first. I don't, I don't let the boiler set itself up because... Honestly, in 15 or 20 jobs, I've never had, well, I've had one that was a warm house that set itself up perfectly. I've never had a back C or an alpha uh, set themselves up perfectly that have this gas valve set up. Every time I have to do it manually, and by that time, if you follow the book, you've already got this boiler red hot because you've gone through three other steps. So just a heads up. I'm not going to show you all the nonsense involved in this because it's just boring I'm bored of editing you must be bored of watching anyway at 9.7 good boiler ok so now that all set we press this to save it and it should leave calibration mode there we go that's the boiler set up so this is the alpha back together um, I couldn't find anything wrong with it other than combustion, so that's it for now.